everybody, it's Chris Schubert coming to you live from CNSG Studios with another edition of The Zoom, where we zoom in on thought leaders in the channel today. Today, I'm very excited to have as my guest the Chief Marketing Officer at IntelliPeer, Mr. Robert Gallup. Robert, welcome to the show. Chris, thanks. Great to be with you here from my basement today. <laughs> well, we'll get into that here in just a moment. Uh, yeah. At least it's not your parents' basement. That's one thing we can always tell folks. Uh, Very so, true. So, Robert, I, I, a lot of times when I'm on these calls, I'm, I'm dealing with either the head sales guy or the or the head technical engineer at a particular company. Uh, this is a rare opportunity uh, opportunity for me to talk to the voice of marketing at one of our favorite suppliers. So. Tell us a little bit uh, about your background and what brought you to IntelliPeer, and of course, what fires you up about working there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm, I, I happened into the CMO role. I'm actually a technical guy, uh, 20 plus years in the industry. So I've, uh, I've spent a lot of time both on, on, the, uh, on the seller side, uh, as well as the buyer side. So I've run IT. Uh, for large large companies, contact centers, uh, Electrolux home products, spent some time at Amazon. Uh, so I know both sides of the fence. So as, as we're bringing products to market, um, as we're building solutions for our customers, I'm always thinking about, okay, when I was doing this and I was buying these things and running <laughs> running this type of a business, what were my pain points? What were the things that I needed? So um, I do bring a, a, a perspective uh, to what we're building and what we're sp- providing to our customers. It's really focused as much as, hey, we need to make money and we need to sell stuff, but we also need to provide value to our customers. Um, And that's what we at IntelliPeer are always focused on. And honestly, it's what sold me on the company. Um, We are are always focused on our customers. Um, We provide award-winning service. and we're we're always thinking customer first, right? And when I when I think back to all the other companies that I've worked at that are successful, they start with the customer and build from there. And that truly is what we focus on here at Intellipure as well. I also think it's a pretty unique that you came from product management into marketing, which in a lot of companies, marketing and product actually they're split. They don't talk to one another, and you end up in cases where something is being marketed. But the product actually doesn't do it. <laughs> uh, yeah. and, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that bring bringing those two worlds together for you uh, is. It, I mean, that's one of the things you're trying to avoid. I'm sure. Yeah, uh, and you'll you'll see that in a lot of our messaging is is we're putting messaging out there, whether it's blog posts, uh, product descriptions, or what have you. What what we really want to convey is is how customers can get value out of the product how they can use it to generate change uh, and do better things and do bigger things within their business. Um, I think one of our, one of our ops guys uh, at our Denver office has the, uh, has one of those um, silly little marketing uh, uh, posters up on his wall. It's a, it's a, a castle made out of sand, right? So it's, we're definitely not making uh, castles out of sand uh, when we're putting together things for our customers, for our partners, we truly are focused on making sure we're, we're providing things that work um, and that we can feel proud at the end of the day of what we're selling to and providing to our customers and, and providing to our partners. Very good. Very good. Uh, so let's kind of get into some of those products here. Now, IntelliPeer, and, and please don't cringe when I say this, IntelliPeer has been thought of for many years as just one of the backbone providers for, drum roll, SEP trucking. And I yep, think yep. everybody knows you for SIP trunking and for what you've brought to that marketplace over the last several years. But yep. you've made, in the last year, a shift into CPaaS. So tell us a little bit about, you know, what is the sweet spot for IntelliPeer? Yes, SIP trunking is part of it. But <laughs> what what is the sweet <laughs> spot for IntelliPeer in 2020? Uh, so yeah, so great, great observation, right? We've been in the business for over 17 years. Um, we've we really made a name for ourselves early on in SIP trunking. Um, and if you looked, if you looked back four or five years, um, there were a handful of businesses in the country that could do what we could do in order to service complex implementations, right? Um, 
So actually, over the last four and a half, five years, we've been making this transition to CPaaS. Um, immediately before I joined the company in 2015, we, we purchased a smaller company in the contact center and automation space. And we've been working over the years to bring those technologies and those thought processes up into the voice network. Um, and actually, over the last three years, we've been building out really the core of that CPaaS offering, which is automation. Um, it's easy to use tools uh, so that if you think of CPaaS in terms of where it's been at for the past five years, it's, it's a very developer-centric offering. Um, what we're focused on, and because we've been in an enter enterprise space for, for many years, we're focused on that enterprise end user who doesn't necessarily know how to write code, but they sure as heck know what their business processes are. They know who their customers are, and they know how best to service their customers. So we're bringing those automation tools, the analytics tools up into an area where they can actually use it and not have to rely on developers and their IT team to build out on top of the CPaaS platform. So what, what we've done over the last year and a half is really we, we've brought those tools forward to our customers and we've been pushing those out into the channel, educating our partners and customers. Um, and what you're starting to see is, is really an uptake of whether it's uh, somebody in HR, in the contact center and product management, being able to take what, what used to be a very complex platform um, and they're able to actually get out there and quickly stand up campaigns, stand up uh, uh, integrations and automations for inbound calls and text messages, and do some really cool stuff with the platform, which at the end of the day helps them drive costs lower internally, helps them find new revenue opportunities, and increase uh, or improve customer experience and employee experience. So for some of our partners out there that have not sold in this market, there's uh, always seems to be a little bit of confusion about CPaaS, uh, especially with, with the ability that you guys use to, hand, to control text messaging and, uh, and that type of operation for a company and full-blown contact center. So for you, where does uh, CPaaS uh, begin? Where does it end? Where does contact center pick up for you guys? So, it shouldn't be a surprise being in the voice space for as long as we've been. We have a large number of contact center customers mm -hmm. uh, where we're providing those communications in um, and really, really providing that the, the phone calls that hit our network and, and go to the customer um, and get processed by a contact center application after us, right? Um, so where we fit in, we've got a large number of customers that have premise-based equipment, or they may be leveraging Cisco uh, cloud um, or Cisco in the cloud for their contact center. Um, because the numbers are coming to us, we can do a lot of stuff before it even hits their premise. So if you, if you think about a mid to large size enterprise, they probably have uh, multiple locations. Uh, they probably have very complex interactions with their customers. Um, and what we're able to do is we're able to take a lot of that load off of the customer before it even hits their contact center, right? So you still have your contact center software deployed, uh, but perfect example is uh, one, of our, uh, one of our large utility customers. Um, I wanna say they have 19 different contact centers. <clears throat> and on any given day, uh, the CRM at one, of those system, at one of those locations may be down. Maybe their contact center software is down and they need to route calls away or they need to have customers self-servicing and know to call back later. And they're, they're able to do that within our platform without having to worry about, oh, contact center one, two, three is down. Um, they're able to quickly go in, adjust how things are routing, adjust the customer experience in our platform um, without having to worry about changing capacity and doing anything within the individual locations. So you've got an amazing CPaaS offering and, and really for the partners out there, you know, obviously you have some that bridges the gap uh, for a lot of the contact centers that don't offer CPaaS or SMS functionality, but you're also dealing with a lot of customers that don't have a need quite yet for that full blown contact center application, which as we all know is mm -hmm. a premium product in the channel today. Um, yep. IntelliPair offers a fantastic option for making SMS messaging, a, a huge part of a customer's business, but not necessarily having to graduate to that really large monthly expense. 
All that being said, you know, there's a lot of competition in the marketplace for both CPAS and CCAS. Uh, what would you say is the top differentiator? Or as I like to say, what do you guys do better than anybody else out there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so so two, two key things. Uh, number one, we're focused on fast time to value for our customers. Um, so when typically when a customer is coming in, as you mentioned, you know, the, the, there could be a myriad of things that they're, that they're trying to do, very complex project. What we're focused on is generate quick wins for our customers and create value over time. So when a customer comes in, the last thing we want to do is say, you're going to get value in six to 12 months off this. We want to generate value within the first month or two. All right. And then continue to build on that over time. And you can do that with our expertise. And then because the tool is so easy to use, we may help the customer get it up and running, but then they can actually take it and run with it and use it in more and more use cases within the contact center, uh, within HR, sales and marketing operations, et cetera. Um, so fast time to value um, is, is critical. And the other thing, if, if you've done business with Intellipeer over the years, you know that our customer service is second to none. Uh, we've won awards, gold, uh, the Gold Stevie Award, two years, um, two years running. Um, and we really focus on customer service so that when a, uh, when a customer has uh, some type of an issue in, in figuring out how to connect, uh, maybe they have uh, an overload on their systems and they need things to adjust, we hop on it immediately. We actually, uh, as a part of COVID-19, <coughs> excuse me. So we actually had, as a, as a part of COVID-19, um, one of the large municipalities in the country um, set up a program for their customers that actually generated so much volume coming into the call, call center, they didn't anticipate it. So it comp completely overloaded the circuits on their side. Uh, and we were able to get in and adjust, increase capacity, work with them, um, so that what could have turned into a multi-day outage for them on their side um, really turned into a much smaller blip. Uh, for for one of the largest municipalities in the country, you know, uh, obviously you're coming not from your parents' basement, but from your home today. As we are in still in the midst of the COVID nineteen crisis, you made uh, mention obviously of that particular customer, uh, which is a unique and powerful story about how Intellipeer was to, you know, have a, a fast value, if you will. Uh, for the services that were purchased, but that's only a part of Intellipeer's overall strategy in dealing with this crisis. So tell us a little bit more about uh, Intellipeer's plan for how to deal with COVID-19 from both a partner and a customer perspective. Yeah, um, so I'll say from an, from an Intellipeer employee perspective, we actually shut down all of our offices in mid-March, sent everybody home, and we've, we've all been entirely working remote since mid-March. Um, so working in the cloud, it's nice that we have the opportunity for everybody to do that. Um, so it's it may be a personal adjustment for people. I've I've got kids in school upstairs. I've got a wife upstairs. Uh, so everybody's got to everybody's got to adjust. But at least from a work perspective, um, all the lights on are Intel are are on at Intellipair, which is nice. We're just all um, wearing pajamas. So, That's the only difference. Just yeah, pants. yeah. I'm, I'm wearing a polo right now and some sweat shorts, so we're good. <laughs> um, but uh, but the other thing from from a customer perspective, um, as we saw this coming, we went, we went out and looked at um, what are the big thing that big things that the industry analysts that our customers are are saying and are going to be running into as as they look at the fact that um, I just look at uh, uh, the um, unemployment agencies in the states. Uh, look at utility companies, uh, look at banks where you've got an onslaught of customer um, requests coming in, same number of employees, maybe a few less employees because you're trying to transition people to working from home. Um, but you look at an onslaught of incoming communications, figuring out how to deal with that um, is a big thing that we've been working on uh, over the last month, um, as well as how how do you better communicate with your customers and your employees? Because now everybody's remote. It's harder. There's a lot more noise um, out there, and you need to you need to stay front and center on the critical things. So, two things that we've we've been focusing on with our partners and customers is take this automation technology, which when we typically go into a customer, 
we'll talk about, we can save you 33% up to 66% on your contact center expenses by deploying automation, right? So in a COVID-19 world, that takes a whole different turn where now you've got 200 times or 200% more volume coming in with the same number of people. So we can take this automation and now help you handle a, a much larger volume of, in, of inbound communications with the same number of people. <clears throat> um, we've done that with a couple of customers uh, to call out one. Uh, we're working with one state right now uh, where um, if you think about uh, 6.6 million people filing for unemployment over the last couple of weeks, absolutely tragic. Uh, but what's just as tragic is the fact that it's hard for them to get into the state agencies, right? So we're working with a couple of states right now on helping them be able to better accommodate that inbound call volume and the inbound request volume for um, for all of those unemployment claims. Um, another piece going back to better communications to your employees and be- better communications to your customers, um, you know, there's a lot of emails out there. SMS has a very high hit rate, right? People, uh, 98% of people open, uh, 98% of texts are opened within the first 60 seconds. Don't quote me on the the 60 seconds, but they're open pretty quickly, right? Um, So through our platform, whether you're in HR, in the contact center operations, you can easily um, pull in a list of recipients, put together a campaign and have that campaign go out. So we actually had one customer that needed to get critical communications out to their employees. Um, They were able to come in, add that package very quickly, um, upload a list, send a blast out. And the CEO didn't even know they had had that capability. And he saw that come across and he said, wow, that's so awesome that we had that. I'm glad you guys have been working on that for so long. And, uh, you know, actually what they had done was they came in and enabled it and were up and running within a day or two. Well, we've entered into a unique era where, you know, the, the first couple of months we were in this was panic and what are we going to do? Now it is, we're moving into an era of adaptation and having a company be able to adapt to utilizing CPAS technologies to interface with their customers, to potentially adapt to having a work from home force, or as you mentioned in several mm-hmm. of your examples, they're just taking a whole heck of a lot more calls than, than they're prepared for or that they can staff to. And that automation that that IntelliPeer provides their CPaaS platform is absolutely a good key strategy to help figure out a way to get through these times. And of course, your billing platforms are known to be very, very flexible and, uh, you know, get the ability to grow and change uh, or shrink. Hopefully, you know, maybe things will get back to normal around here. You have the capability to do that. And I think that's something that is a hallmark of, of IntelliPeer, but also uh, is a bold statement as to where you're going in the future. Great. Well, uh, obviously for our IntelliPeer family, uh, we're big fans of you guys out, out here at CNSG. We've got a very strong relationship with Kelly Strive to Delight Davis and, of course, Sean Kane. Uh, but <laughs> uh, we've talked a lot about IntelliPeer here today. But, Rob, from your perspective, what's the one thing that you want to our community to hear from you? You know, what's the one big takeaway you want them to have coming out of this Zoom? Um, So business has changed, at least in the near term. Um, And right now it's, it it really is about taking care of the immediate crisis. Um, And we're seeing a lot of opportunities, as you said, with automation um, to get out there, um, bring the automation and bring those bring the ability to communicate across multiple channels to our customers and solve some immediate critical needs um, that the businesses are just falling all over right now. Um, so really help solve that immediate need, which, which at the end of the day sets them up for success now. Um, and then they can grow on that as we get on the other side of this crisis. And now we can talk about, okay, now how can we use uh, these automation capabilities and the communication capabilities to help you drive costs lower, find new revenue revenue opportunities. As we get back into thinking about customer experience and employee experience, how can we help you guys improve that as well? Well, it sounds like automation is going to lead to adaptation. See? See what I did there? Yeah, for sure. But yeah, please feel free <laughs> to use that. I will not charge a royalty fee. 
Anyway, moving on. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so very much for joining us today. We, I look forward to chatting with you more about this in the future. And uh, thanks for being there for both our community and our customers in 2020. Absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity to talk today. And we'll see you all next time on the Zoom.